It's the most wonderful time of the year, and we're so glad you joined us today for the Accelerate Church broadcast with Pastor Jeremy File. Today, he's ministering on the real meaning of Christmas. Well, we don't want to miss it. Let's jump right into it now. Christmas season is a time of all times in our life to glorify and praise God for all he's done in our lives. In fact, I challenge you this Christmas, maybe set aside some time with your family and just tell your children, maybe your grandchildren, maybe your relatives that will be with you or you'll be with them and tell them about what God has done in your life over this past year. Some people always wonder why we make such a big deal about Christmas. Well, I get excited because I know the real meaning of it. And I thought to myself, well, if I preach this year on the real meaning of Christmas, maybe everyone will get excited about it. Because it's worth getting excited about. It really is. What am I talking about? Well, the real meaning of Christmas has to do with covenant. You see, the Lord always deals with man through covenant. Jot that down if you didn't jot it down last week. The Lord always deals with man through covenant. Now, God didn't have to deal with us this way, but he wants us to see how much we can depend upon his word. As we go through this series, I think this is going to make a whole lot of sense to you about the real meaning of Christmas is covenant. When God sent his son Jesus, he literally fulfilled some words that were spoken thousands of years before Jesus was on this planet. It's found back in Genesis chapter 22 after Abraham had believed God for 25 years for his son, he had Isaac. And after Isaac grew to be about 20 years old, the Lord said, I want you to bring Isaac. Actually, let's just read it. Go to Genesis 22 and verse 1. Say it one more time with me this morning. Thank God for the word. Aren't you glad to be here? Look at your neighbor right now. Say, I'm glad to be here with you this morning. (laughs) <laughs> Genesis 22, 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. Let, let me just notate this. I, I want to read quick, but I've got to tell you this because I've noticed there's a lot of modern Christians that have this flawed way of thinking that God's going to test them with the sickness or some kind of malady. God doesn't test you with sickness. God always tests your obedience. And no matter how long you walk with God or how long you've believed God for something, he's going to come back with this test. Are you willing to obey me? Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Praise God. So there's no other way for God to make you a free moral agent, a free-willed person, okay, and know whether or not you're going to serve him without giving you a test of will you obey So Abraham has had the miraculous happen in his life. Only God can make happen what had happened. But God comes back and tests him. And notice how he tests him. He said something to him. He called him by name. Abraham. Here's how you pass the first test. Here I am, was Abraham's reply. That's pretty simple, isn't it? But isn't that amazing how God will call you in the middle of the night, you'll wake up suddenly, you'll blame it on the dog barking or a noise in the neighborhood or I got a rumbling in my tummy. But did you know if you're awake, you ought to at least check in with the Lord and say, Lord, did you wake me up? Is there something you want to speak to me? Because in the middle of the night, all these other voices are shut off. And there's a scripture in the Bible that's just kind of roaring out of me this morning. Be still and know that I am God you got to be able to be in touch with the voice of God. Amen? Abraham, he said, here I am. Verse 2, Genesis 22. He said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac. Now, we know he had Ishmael. And you might be startled to find out he actually had other sons and daughters after he had Isaac. But God was pointing to what was birthed by faith. Isn't that something? Only God could have done that. So take him, the one you love, go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is to show you something. God always deals with man through covenant. He had already made a blood covenant with Abraham. And Abraham believed God without staggering for 25 years. And God provided, right? 
He always provides when you believe him. But Abraham knew something, and he thought different than most Americans when they read this. See, a lot of Americans read this and say, what kind of awful God would say make a human sacrifice? And I get what you're saying. But right on the other hand, when you're serving a God of covenant, and when you read the book of Hebrews, you find out that Abraham, when he heard this, in his mind he said, well, God cannot lie, so if he's asking me to give him as a sacrifice, he's going to raise him up from the dead immediately. And look at what he said here. Let's, let's read this story. I'm trying not to preach. Let's just read the word here, verse 3. But I'm stirred up, okay? So Abraham rose early in the morning, and there's a sermon in that. The Lord said, take your son Isaac and bring him, and let's sacri- make a sacrifice to the Lord. Abraham didn't wait a week to do it. He didn't even wait 48 hours. Next year, I'll get serious about serving the Lord. So I want you to think about the, the journey the Lord has had this church on. At the beginning of the year, the Lord had me deal with you on this, making this year count. Why? The end of the world is on us, guys. Time is short. I know you've heard that before, and you might get tired of hearing that, but you have no idea how close we really are to the end. The the end of the world is upon us, guys. This isn't the time to play around. This is it. We're in the last seconds of the last minutes of the last days. Abraham rose early. See, he didn't waste time with God. Rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac, his son, He split the wood for the burnt offering. Look at all the trouble he's going to. He arose and went to the place of which God had told him. It's important that you find out where God's told you to be and be there and remain there. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. So this is three days journey to get to where God said. When God tells you something, sometimes it's great effort on your part. Do you have plans on Christmas morning? Well, make for sure you're not alone and join us here at Accelerate Church on Sunday, December 25th for a special Christmas service. It's happening at 10 a.m. and it will be for the entire family. We'd love to have you join us for our special Christmas Day service. If God's asking me to do something, He's trying to get something to me. He's not trying to take something from me. But God's trying to blow up your carnal way of your perspective. So you don't end up in destruction. Because every man does what's right in their own eyes, but the end of it many times is destruction. you got to do what's right according to God's perspective, not your perspective. There's things you don't know about. There's some things he sees you don't see. All it takes is flying a little ways, and you'll know that. Yesterday, you know, I was sleepy for a minute, so I had the window thing. Now I was by the window, see? And... We get up to our altitude or whatever, and I open that up. Boy, the sun was shining bright. Well, I hadn't seen the sun in several days because in Michigan, it's dark and gray this time of the year. That's why I like Texas to see the sun shining out there. I don't mind a cloud-covered day or two, but, boy, I like the sun coming back out. Well, all you got to do is get up above the clouds, and the sun's shining every day. You just don't always get in the vehicle to get up there and see it from that perspective. So if I'm down here, I'm like, oh, it's gloomy. It's sad. It's another sad day. Truth is, you just need a different perspective. You need to stop thinking the way you think. Stop going by how you feel. Start thinking the way God thinks. I like this. Abraham, he's a covenant man. I'm going somewhere with this. Verse 6, Genesis 22. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac, his son, He took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham. Now really focus in here, guys. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father. He said, my father. He said, here I am, my son. (laughs) He said, look, we got stuff for the fire, the wood. Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? What does this have to do with Christmas, Pastor? The real meaning. Because what Abraham spoke all the way back in Genesis 22, God fulfilled in his son. 
when Abraham answered, here's what he said, out of covenant. He said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. (laughs) So the two of them went together. Now in Abraham's case, if we kept reading, here's what you would find out. There was a ram caught in the thicket, right? But for you and I, he provided the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is why heaven rejoiced, and you should too. The Christmas season is here. Yeah. Psalm 111, verse 1. Praise the Lord. I like this. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Right now, I just want you to raise your hand to the Lord. Say it. I will praise the Lord with all that I am, with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, glory to God. This is the time to praise him, see? Glory. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures until tomorrow. No, how long does it endure? How long? Say it forever. 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 His righteousness endures. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. Sometimes you got to remind yourself look what the Lord has done. You just got to say, look what the Lord has done. And then talk with somebody about what the Lord's done. Tell somebody, man, let me just tell you, I was broke, I was busted, I was disgusted. But the Lord done raised me up from that pitiful, pitiful bed of affliction. No longer am I in poverty. No longer am I sick. Glory to God. He's made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. Here's why I read Psalm 111 for this reason right here. He will ever Be mindful of his covenant. Woo! Why do you shout about that? Why do you make that loud woo sound? I'll tell you why. Because I recognized God will never forget what he promised. People may forget you. God's not going to forget what he promised you. People will forget what they promised you. My dad is an upright man, a man of integrity. I said it last week and I meant it. I've not known anyone with more integrity than Ricky File my entire life. Never found any. I found some other men that have high integrity, but I have not found any that I would say have more integrity than this man who sits right here with us every Sunday. It's amazing. He'll take notes. I've said this before. I don't know why some people won't. I'm not mad at anybody, but I think to myself, well, you must know more than Pastor Ricky who taught me everything I know. Imagine that. He taught me everything Everything that I know, and yet he sits over here and takes notes. Well, because he recognizes that the Holy Spirit went ahead and got, got a hold of everything he put inside me and has expounded it. But if he's humble enough to sit here with his notepad out like this and ready to take notes week after week, he even told me the other day, he texted me, he said, well, I'm going to be talking about this sermon on the radio all week. I thought to myself, well, who am I that that, that would even happen? And I thought to myself, well, What on earth happens to people? They come, they're excited, they tell me things like, you know, I'll lay my life down for you. I need to come meet with you. Okay, well, I'm leaving. Well, at least you gave me that courtesy. Not everybody even does that, you know. (laughs) But the, the facts are just the facts, man. A lot of people, they'll forget what they promised you. This man is not a man that ever forgot things he promised me. I sit here and thought about this. I was like, I could only think of one thing that I mistakenly thought he promised me when I was a kid that he didn't give me. A red wheelbarrow that had a blue wheel on it. When I was about five years old, I wanted it so bad. And he forgot that we were in a store. I think it was actually the best store is what it was called in Amarillo. So now it's Randall County building over there on Western. Best. Anybody remember best over there on Western? What was it? Not Best Buy, no. Best Buy is over there by the mall. Best, B-E-S-T. 
You had to live here a long time, Larry, to remember best. I used to, my grandma used to live across the street. That's why I remembered it. But I remember they had a red wheelbarrow. I was young. I don't remember how old I was, but I said, Dad, I want that. And in my mind, I thought my dad said, you, you're going to get that. And here's what I knew. If I ever heard Ricky File tell me you're going to get something, I was going to get it. I didn't have to have it in my hand. All I had to have was his word, and I would be excited. He'd tell me, Jeremy, you do good in school. I mean, there would be different things all along life's journey. But, I mean, come on, we had a Dairy Queen just a few blocks from the house. Texas stop sign. Anybody know what I'm talking about around here? Got some ice cream, blizzards, belt busters. He said, thumbs down to the belt but no, I like belt busters, thank you very much. Hadn't had one in a while, but if dad promised me, if you do your schoolwork, you're getting a blizzard, I might as well put a coat on, man, because I'm, I'm going I'm to have a blizzard. <laughs> I'll tell you, if I just do what he says, I'm going to get what he says. I was sitting there trying to think of anything that my dad ever promised me. And I remember that little wheelbarrow, and that was the only thing I could think of my entire life. And you know what? I'm sure as a kid I misheard. And if I'm not careful and don't move on past this, he's going to go find some somewhere and bring me a little wheelbarrow that I don't need now. <laughs> but I can tell you, you can count on his word, but let me just tell you this. As much as I love my dad, and I mean it, I've never seen a man of more integrity. This is a man of his word. I will tell you this. He's not God Almighty. And God Almighty doesn't even have the ability to forget His Word. Do you have plans on Christmas morning? Well, make for sure you're not alone and join us here at Accelerate Church on Sunday, December 25th for a special Christmas service. It's happening at 10 a.m. and it will be for the entire family. We'd love to have you join us for our special Christmas Day service. I want you to know something this morning. The Lord is serious about covenant, whether you are or not. He said in Psalm 89, verse 34, oh, I like this one. Just look at your neighbor and say, I like this one too. My covenant I will not break. What? My covenant I will not break. Now, you already know the Holy Spirit says in these last times, people will be covenant breakers, right? That's one of the signs of the end times. There'll be truce breakers. That's what, the way it's, it's in New King James. What is that? That's a covenant breaker. Look at it. I mean, the divorce rate's still 50 to 60% in the church. People look at each other. They'll tell the pastor they really mean it. They'll tell God, I mean it. But they're not going to keep that covenant. They're going to go do what they feel like doing. And turn around and blame their covenant partner for their lack of keeping the covenant. Isn't that amazing? Some things don't ever change. That's a demon. A demon always tries to get you to break covenant. Know that that's his purpose and assignment when it comes to your life. Because God always deals with people through covenant. And God said, I'm so serious, my covenant I will not break. Nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Woo! Glory. Glory. He will not break. He will not alter his word of covenant. Therefore, once you know what is your covenant right, you then become dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. I'm just going to be honest with you in here. Some of you still aren't dangerous to the kingdom of darkness because you don't know what is a covenant right. With this being the case, that God's not going to break it. And he won't alter the word that comes out of his lips. The only hope the enemy has in your life is to keep you living in the land of ignorance of what God has already said. And why is that any wonder? His game plan hasn't changed from Genesis chapter 3. Where the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, verse 1. And look what the serpent said to the woman. Has God indeed said? 
I believe this. The biggest tests that will ever come in your life are going to be centered on this one thing. Do you really know what God said or not? If you know what God said, why are you acting like a fool? If you know what God said, why are you acting like you're about to be taken out with disaster? If you know what God said, if you know the real meaning of Christmas, why would you listen for one more second to someone who tells you, don't celebrate this time of the year? You'd be just as good to watch the old Grinch television broadcast or whatever movie. I'm not recommending it. I don't know what else in there, but I know my kids have watched it before. He's one ugly sucker. <laughs> and yet people, want, they, they're want, they get ugly because they forget what God said. It's at this exact point, I have it underlined there, all the way back in the garden, it's at this exact point in our lives where the enemy attacks people. He may, he may never hear a voice. He's not going to show up as a snake and say this. But this is going to be the question that rings in your mind. Has God really said that I'm healed? Has God really said that I'm blessed? Listen, God will not alter or break his word. Therefore, the enemy's question in your life is, do you know what God said? Because God ain't changing on his end. So the only change ends up being on our end. Once you know what's come out of the mouth of the Lord, you start to realize this. Listen, I just got a few that just rose up on the inside of me. And as they rose up, and I... I topped these out on that flight yesterday. I started crying like a baby, man, because God just moved on me. Gary was beside me. I don't think he even knew it, but the flight attendant, he came and he's, and I have headphones on listening to worship, and, I, and, and the Lord's moving. All these things are just coming up on the inside of me. What I'm about to go off on here, right here, all this is coming up. I'm topping out. I've got tears flowing, and he's like, you want something to drink? I look up. I'm crying. Sure. I want something to drink. He's probably like, what is wrong with this guy? I'll tell you what, what was happening is I was reminding myself that the battle is the Lord's. Oh, hold on. See, I don't know if you believe that or not. When you believe it, it'll cause you to say, wait a minute. The doctor said I have diabetes. Um, no, the battle is the Lord's. The doctor says you have an incurable disease of any kind. No, 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 no. The battle is the Lord's. Well, that's neat for you, but you don't know how I feel. God's not altering his word because you have some kind of weird feeling. Feelings don't change or alter his word. Whew, what about this one? He always leads me to triumph. So, Father, I thank you that as I follow the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step, triumph is unfolding in front of my eyes. Woo! What about this? That by his stripes I were. I put it that way on purpose because I looked it up. I said, let me see if First Peter changed. No, by his stripes you were healed. Yeah, my, my body don't feel like it. Neither does mine, but it can shut up. By his stripes, it's already been done. I'm healed. I'm whole. In Jesus' name. God's not changing that. Well, I feel weak. I feel terrible. God's not changing it. And I got a covenant right to healing, and so do you. So do your children. See, when the doctor told Aaron and I, don't get your hopes up. Things aren't being produced right. You're going to have to go see a specialist. We went to our pastor, who at the time was Pastor Ricky and Miss Diana. And you know what he said? We've been down this fight already. And he said, not only that, I got some skin in the game. This was a man that was reminding God and us of the covenant. Because God told him that he would see his children and his children's children. Yeah. Woo! See, that don't mean anything to you. But when you get a doctor's report that doesn't line up, you've got to get back and say, wait a minute. That doctor didn't alter God's word. And I don't care what comes my way. Has God said it? Yeah, 
He said it. He said, I'm blessed. He said, I'm healed. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. What about this one? This one rose up inside of me. In all these things, ye, that means me, that means you, are more than conquerors. I don't know what all you're going through. Maybe you're watching my television and you're going through things that, I, I mean, we, the list may be this long. But it don't matter how long the list is. In all these things, all of them, it don't matter, in all of them, I am more than a conqueror. Woo, shout to God if you believe that. What about this one? All of the promises are yes and amen. So be it. All of the promises are yes. Somebody say yes. yes. See, people, I, I, still, I heard a guy tell that the other day. What do you do when God says no? And immediately I thought about this. I said, well, hold up. God didn't change his word. And he's not going to alter it and say no to what he already said yes to. And he already said yes to the blessing. He already said yes to healing. He already said yes to wholeness. He already said yes to a house full of children like all the plants around my table. Well, the enemy don't like it. Well, he can watch me eat. Because he ain't getting my peace either. When you realize some of these, there's so much more. But this rose up in me. I'm flying high, 30,000 foot looking. I'm like, Woo! He holds the key to every victory. He holds the keys to death, hell, the grave. Keys to the kingdom, he holds them. And he's given them to me. I ain't got a reason to be sad no more. Why would I be down and out? Well, because all these things, look at what all the majority of the humans believe in America. Well, that would be depressing. But instead, I said, I'm going to turn my back on that. And I'm going to look. What does the covenant say? What did God say? Because he ain't changing. He ain't changing. He ain't nervous. Whew. People might give up on you. God hadn't given up on you. See, instead of getting sad, you should lift up your voice and you should shout. Well, that concludes today's broadcast. But it is not the end of Pastor Jeremy's sermon or sermon series on the real meaning of Christmas. You can find all of that online at our website, acceleratechurch.cc. There on the media tab, you'll find all the sermons Pastor Jeremy's preached. And hey, if you're in the local area, just come hear him in person. We're here Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. and we'd love to have you.